Hello there. Today we're going to explore the folder structure that was generated by Phoenix. But before we start, I forgot to mention another very important plugin that we are going to use on this course, which is Phoenix Framework. And as you can read here, it supports the syntax highlighting for Higgs files, which is the front end for Phoenix. So this is very important. Please install the Phoenix Framework plugin. All right, let's take a quick look over the files that were generated. And actually, before we start, I think I'm going to do a git init here because I don't like seeing everything on the same color on this code. I like having like a darker uh, text for stuff that is not considered by git. So this is what I'm going to do. And we have a git ignore here. So you can safely say git init and then git add everything. And then I'm going to say git commit, let there be light. I need password. All right. Did it work? Yes. Okay. So now you have uh, color coded folders. So let's start with the first folder. As you can see, the text here is darker. That means that you do not track this folder on Git. And why is that? Because as the name implies, this is where you store all your compiled files. So typically, you don't want to mess around too much with this folder unless you're having some type of bug and you want to see, I don't know, if a compiled file is broken, then you can remove this and then rerun the Phoenix server. But usually, I, I don't touch this uh, folder at all. This other one is automatically generated by Elixir LS. You don't need to worry about this. And as you can see, we don't track this on Git. The other one, now this is the first important folder. The assets folder is where you store all your front end files. So here you can store JavaScript, CSS files. And as you can see, by default, we use Tailwind with Phoenix. Thank God, because I cannot imagine writing vanilla CSS in 2024. So thank God this comes pre-configured uh, by Phoenix. No need to install that and yeah, have to worry about installing Tailwind. Right. Now, one thing that is important to notice is here you just store your front end files. If you have a static asset, like an image, for example, you do not store on the assets folder. You store inside priv static, where is that? Images, there you go. Here you can see a bunch of static files like the logo, favicon, uh, this robots.txt, which is important for SEO purposes. So static files, do not add them to assets. This folder is handled by ESBuild and everything that is inside this folder is bundled to the production app later. We also have the config folder, which as the name implies, you can configure all kind of, kinds of stuff here. You have your more generic config file, which is responsible for handling generic stuff. Like you can configure ESBuild, yep, ESBuild and Tailwind here, for example. We also have one dedicated file, configuration file per environment. So if you have one configuration that applies to dev, but not to prod, then you write the configuration here. So as an example, I was building a REST API the other day and I'm using authentication and to encrypt and decrypt the user password, I'm using bcrypt. Now, encrypting the password is a very CPU intensive task. It takes a while to do that. Now, imagine if I write a test for the user registration, then I, I don't want my test to be slow. And by default, if I'm not mistaken, bcrypt uses 12 rounds of encryption and that is slow. I don't want to do that on my test environment. Like I, I just want to use one round of encryption and that's it. For testing purposes, that's more than enough. So here on the test.exs file, you can configure bcrypt to only use one round of encryption instead of 12. 
This way your tests are still fast. That's just one example. We also have your node modules for Elixir, which is the depths folder. Of course, we do not track that on Git. And here's the funny part. If there is any Elixir or Phoenix app expert watching this video by any chance, please explain to me why your source code is inside the lib folder. Who came up with this name, lib? Like, what, what is lib? I don't know. For some reason, your entire source code is inside this folder. And why not SRC or app? I have no clue. I don't know, but it is what it is. This is the source code for your, for your application. And as we can see here, we have two folders. The first folder is the name of your application. On our case, is shop. And the second folder is the name of your application underscore web. So the reason for this is Elixir tries to isolate your business logic from the external world. So the first folder, shop, is responsible for your business domain, which is pretty much the model from the MVC architecture. And then you interact with the business domain and expose it to the external world. On our case is a web front end inside this folder. So inside the shop underscore web is where you can find the equivalent of your controllers and views from the MVC architecture. All right. Inside Priv, this folder is used to store files that you need in production, but they are not really part of your source code. So for example, we have static assets like images. We have your migrations files. And we also have the files responsible for internationalization. Yes, that's a tough word to say for a non-English native speaker. OK, so we use a package called get text to do translations on our app. And all the files that are related to translations are inside priv and get text. OK, finally, we have the test folder, which tries to imitate the structure of the lib folder. So for example, here on the lib, we have shop web and controllers. And on the test folder, we have shop web as well and controllers as well. So here we have a very basic test for the home page of our application. Okay, what else? Finally, the remaining files at the root are the formatter.exs responsible for dealing with anything formatter git ignore, very basic. And we also have your package.json for Elixir, which is mix.exs. Now on this file, you can find a couple of informations about your app, like the app name, the version, the version of Elixir. We also have, let me see what else. We also have the dependencies array where you can see all the packages that are installed on Phoenix. And finally, we also have a couple of custom scripts. The first one is my favorite, and I wish we had something like this on JavaScript, which is the setup. The setup does everything in order to get your Phoenix server running. It installs the dependency, set up the database, set up the assets, and then build the assets. So you run mix setup after you clone any Phoenix project and you're good to go. You are good to run mix phx.server and everything will magically work. And if you have any custom script, you can define it here. So for example, we have a custom test script, which is responsible for creating the database, migrating the database, and only then running the tests. Okay, so this is a very important file. And finally, okay, I think this is the last one. This is your package uh, lock equivalent for Elixir. Please do not change this file manually. This is handled by mix. Stay away from this file, okay? That's all you need to know. Stay away from this. And of course, we have the readme. And because we are using SQLite 3, you can see the database here. 
if you're using Postgres, you're not going to see it here. All right. So today it was a pretty chill uh, video. Not a lot of new information, but that's it. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed.